Hello everyone and thanks for joining us today for our live product session on how to combat oversharing in Microsoft 365 with Cisco to Point. My name is Alexandra and I'm a product design lead here at Syskit and today I'm joined by Daniel, our product manager. Hi everyone. So here's what we have prepared for you today. Uh, first of all, we will talk about how to understand and minimize oversharing. What are the general risks with oversharing and how you can tackle them? And that will be followed by Daniel's hands-on demo of, with some real use cases and examples. And finally, at the end, we will answer any questions you might have. So before we begin, uh, here is some important information for everyone. All registrants will receive a recording of this session. Uh, we will have, as I already said, a Q&A session at the end of this webinar. Please feel free to use this Q&A uh, section on your right-hand side. And finally, don't be shy. All of your thoughts and experiences are important to us. Do not hesitate to share your feedback on this topic because, as you know, your input really guides our journey here at Syskit. So you can use this Q&A function also to let us know what your current challenges are so we can address them in the future, share your, own, share your own experiences related to the topics discussed so we can actually learn together. All right. Now, for those of you who don't know us, Syskit is a software and development company which was founded 15 years ago. We create innovative and high quality and easy to use governance and management solutions for Microsoft 365 and SharePoint. Uh, lately, we've been focused on Microsoft 365 almost exclusively, and we are currently trusted by more than 3,500 customers around the world, and some of which you can see on the right-hand side of this slide. Our flagship product is called Syskit Point, and it is a management and governance platform for everything M365 related. It is helping organizations of any size with fast growing environments, and especially in highly regulated industries, to get a better control over user access, uh, inventory, and management across multiple workspaces, as well as to enforce different governance policies. So what you're getting is a deep visibility, easy cleanup and control over your external collaboration, oversharing and user access, therefore minimizing any unnecessary sharing and permissions. Most importantly, it helps you keep your environment clean. It helps you keep your environment properly governed from the creation to the end of life of all your workspaces. So long before the term oversharing even became a buzzword, Syskit Point was already leading the charge here. You could say that we were pioneers in preventing oversharing simply by addressing who has access to what. Essentially, Syskit Point has always been about making your environment co-pilot ready by enabling effective management. A recent research from Gartner analysts actually highlights the significant concern for all enterprises, and that is that ne nearly 30% of them have experienced a breach in their AI systems. And this is obviously a substantial number that is indicating that AI security is a critical issue today. But if we take a deeper look in the data, it becomes even more concerning because 62% of these breaches were due to data compromises by internal parties. And that means that in many cases, the threat actually comes from within the organization itself. And employees might be oversharing or mishandling data, and that is what is leading to these compromises. This also underscores the importance of not only focusing on the external users, which we tend to do a lot, but also ensuring that all your internal practices are secure and that people who need to be are aware of the risks of oversharing data. And today, there are so many resources available. Microsoft is getting more and more user friendly, especially with the introduction of Copilot. And that is making it harder for IT professionals to manage all the sprawl and oversharing. This is why uh, we actually see the world where IT teams are not handling day-to-day -day management and governance tasks all alone. They are doing it with the help of their site owners. So what we learn from during our research on oversharing, that organizations which have gone on the path uh, of delegated workspace management are performing five times more management actions than the organizations that didn't. 
and removing all these unnecessary permissions is actually a key to minimize oversharing as this is actually the number one challenge of the organizations are facing with any sort of copilot adoption and an interesting uh, fact is also that 70 percent of those permissions management actions were done by workspace owners which is just stating that delegated management really is crucial in the fight against oversharing. This is actually how IT teams can scale their impact and do more. Now we'll talk about how you can minimize oversharing, but before we start, just a quick introduction. What actually is oversharing? To, to put it as simple as I can, it is a content that was shared beyond the necessary audience. And that is actually a main stumbling block for organizations that are looking to expand their use of Copilot because everything that uh, search can find, Copilot can actually use. So how can you minimize it and maintain those improvements over the long run? We will show you today some best practices and practical steps that you can implement right away to significantly reduce your oversharing and most importantly, to keep it that way. So while this may not be an overnight change, we want you to leave here with a clear picture on what your action points should be. We will walk you through the so-called 4P process, so prepare, purge, prevent and protect, which we divided in these two phases. This is something that we often uh, implement with organizations to help them tackle oversharing challenges effectively. So this approach can actually secure your data and optimize your the digital M365 workspace. What we often hear when we talk to our clients is that they talk a lot about co-pilot co readiness, sorry, and becoming co-pilot ready, where the first focus is actually only on the first step of how you can prepare them, how you can identify the potential oversharing, maybe uh, remove some unnecessary permissions, but we haven't heard a lot of them talking about how to actually stay co-pilot ready and how to prevent oversharing from happening again. And for us, this is the key. So the second phase is called prevent and protect because you need a solution, obviously, that would help you identify it and quickly remove any existing oversharing, but you need to make sure that it doesn't happen again by continuously monitoring and automating oversharing prevention, either by delegation to site owners, which I already mentioned, or by automation. And most of the discussion nowadays is focused on the prepare phase, how to be copilot ready, not that much about purge, and the very least talk is about the final phase, which once again is crucial to stay copilot ready. Now let's move into the first phase. So the prepare and purge phase truly is your first line of defense against oversharing. And it involves establishing an understanding of the current data sharing and access landscape across your entire organization. So what you need here are the tools to assess and understand every aspect of your current sharing and permissions to be sure that you, are, <laughs> you remain secure. If you're able to act quickly to mitigate your existing oversharing risks, that is also crucial in this phase. And that's why in all of our reports, you can immediately perform management actions. And what's even more important, you can perform those actions in bulk. So it's really quick and easy for you. So when we talk about how to prepare and purge, we talk about assessing and removing all the unnecessary sharing links you have, being, meaning if they are anonymous or the company-wide links, everything. You need to understand if your workspaces should be public or private. In some in the cases, there is uh, an actual use case for them to be public, but most of all, mostly that shouldn't be the case. And how removing the large groups should be, I'm sorry, the access for, from large groups should be from your private teams. So the three key reports that we have here is the group access report, the sharing links report, and sites overview, which is something that Daniel will actually show to you right now before. We continue with our presentation. So, Daniel, are you ready for a demo? Yeah, of course. Just let me share my screen. Just give me a second. So, hopefully, everyone can see my screen right now. Yep. Okay, awesome. So, uh, we were talking about uh, how to 
uh, actually become copilot ready. So how to minimize all of the existing oversharing in your environment. So when we talk about this with, uh, let's say a wider audience, so with our customers, with potential customers, just uh, to understand kind of to get the visibility into what is actually being overshared right now is the first step that everyone is interested in. So here uh, with Point, uh, as Alex already mentioned, we have a couple of reports that uh, pinpoint this very, very easily for everyone. So the first report is actually the sharing, sharing links report. So when we are talking about this, uh, it's uh, important to understand that although you can actually make a wide scale uh, analysis of your entire environment with this point, what we usually see is that organizations are focusing on, uh, let's say to start with on a subset, and this is what they can actually do with uh, just adding a couple of columns here. So for example, if I add a privacy column, I can focus on all of the, let's say, private workspaces. If, if I have sensitivity, I can even add the sensitivity column here and, uh, let's say, discuss all of these and analyze all of the, for example, confidential private private uh, workspaces in, in my environment. For the sake of this demo, let me focus on all of those that are private to pre-filter this report. And then I can run the entire, let's say, uh, report to assess all of the sharing links. What you can do here is, uh, let's say, also very important is, you know, we, we know when, when we're talking about co-pilot, uh, specific people that can view or edit is what is desired. So I will remove that. And hopefully uh, you don't have a lot of anyone links, but this is something that you can also review with point. But for the sake of the demo, I'm just going to remove that as well. And we are going to be focusing on those that are kind of hidden uh, usually, so uh, company-wide sharing links is something that is a big challenge uh, for co-pilot adoption and uh, becoming co-pilot ready because these are actually the links that uh, everyone in your organization has access to and co-pilot can return information based on those links as well. So uh, if I run the report, I get the overview of my entire in, uh, tenant uh, with all of the uh, sharing links that are currently there and that are actually people in company with access to the share link can view or edit this information. And here uh, I can uh, just focus on a couple of uh, sharing links, so focus on them, or I can immediately say, okay, uh, on all of my private private workspaces, I don't want any com uh, company-wide sharing links. And I can immediately, as Alex said, from all of our reports, you can do the management action. So I can immediately remove all of these sharing links. And in that sense, uh, kind of minimize my co uh, my uh, oversharing uh, for the company-wide links. So this is the first report. Uh, the second report that we were discussing uh, and something that a lot of our customers are having benefits from is actually the group access report. So when we are talking about the group access report, this is a report which will give you access, uh, which will give you information where each group in your tenant has access to. Uh, what we see usually uh, how customers are using this is to identify where everyone except external users has access to. So if I focus here on everyone except external users, I can run this report and get an overview of all of uh, all of the workspaces within my tenant where everyone except external users has access to. And I can, again, in bulk, remove access for uh, everyone except external users from those workspaces. So this is very powerful to understand and also to do uh, those, uh, let's say, minimize uh, the oversharing actions uh, within, within uh, this report. So this is kind of the two key reports. The last report that we were mentioning is the sites overview. So with sites overview, uh, what you can uh, actually do is get the understanding of all of the public workspaces uh, within your environment and understand, for example, okay, I want to understand what is the, uh, who is the owner of the branding? Should this actually be, uh, should this be uh, public or not? Here on the, the site details, I see that my owners for this is Eva and Jonathan, and I can discuss this with them to see if this should be should be public, public or not. So this is uh, roughly, let's say, how to uh, use Syskit Point to become copilot ready to minimize the existing oversharing. So now over to Alex to guide us through the second two P's.
All right. Let's go back to our presentation. So going further into the prevent and protect phase, as I said multiple times, this phase is crucial because you need a solution that uh, is actually here to make sure that oversharing doesn't happen again. And that is uh, possible by continuously monitoring and automating oversharing prevention, either by delegation to site owners or by automation. And first thing that we always suggest is to set up alerts for any sharing activities or privacy changes so that you can actually act quickly. So you are getting these alerts in real time so you can be notified if any potential oversharing occurs ever again. Then we suggest to set up governance automation rules that will apply uh, access review policies to, for example, all of your private and, and or all of your sensitive workspaces so that you're making sure that they are being reviewed regularly. Then to think about ma minimizing the footprint, footprint sorry, for potential oversharing, we are suggesting the automation of the detection of inactive workspaces or lifecycle management. So you're actually letting your workspace owners decide if they want to keep, archive, or delete the workspaces, which means that you're actually minimizing the potential for oversharing stale or duplicated or old content as well. And during this entire process, you can also have a, you also have access to the security and compliance dashboard where you can proactively monitor and quickly resolve any potential uh, oversharing vulnerabilities. But I think it's better to see it once again. So, uh, Daniel, we are back to you for a demo. Okay, perfect. So, hopefully, you can see my screen again. Good. Yep. So, uh, the first thing that we said, so you've done all of the preparation, you've gone through the sharing links, you've gone through the group access, you've uh, assessed all of the uh, public, uh, let's say, workspaces, and that has been a lot of work. So obviously you don't want, uh, again, to be in that situation. So the first thing, alerts to kind of at least get that visibility when something is shared uh, outside, uh, for example, with, with the, uh, let's say, everyone except external users group. So uh, in that sense, uh, there is the possibility on uh, our reports to configure tenant-wide alerts. So once you do the tenant-wide alerts, uh, this is actually a baseline for all of your sites, all of the workspaces within your environment, where you can actually say, okay, for all of the sharing activities. So for example, sharing with everyone, I want to enable this alert. And if a sharing with everyone or everyone except external user occur, occurs, I immediately want to notify my, uh, my administrators so that they at least know that something like this has happened. Also, the same can apply for uh, the privacy changes. So if a certain group has gone from private to public, or if a certain team has gone from private to public, that you are immediately notified about this and that you as admins know that something like this has happened after you've gone through the trouble of removing everything there. Uh, what we can also do is, if you want to uh, implement even further, uh, let's say, granularity here and notify, for example, on all of those maybe highly confidential uh, workspaces. So, for example, like we have here, contribute, which is confidential and private. If I want to notify my site admins as well for the uh, for for the alerts, I can set up uh, site-specific alerts. So, in this case. I can do the same for uh, sharing with everyone, but in this case, if I enable this, I can even uh, delegate this to my site owner and say, okay, uh, please be aware that sharing with everyone has happened on this site, so please go and, and review this if this is something that, that shouldn't happen. So this is also the possibility that where you can uh, delegate some of the uh, alerts even to, to uh, your end users. The same, again, can happen to uh, with the uh, change to private to public. So this is also a possibility that you can you can uh, give to your end users. So this is what it uh, when it comes to alerts. Uh, but obviously, most of the organizations want to uh, have some sort of actionable uh, things to do when something like this happens. So what we are uh, constantly uh, discussing with our uh, let's say customers and potential potential customers is the ability to uh, continuously monitor the entire environment and apply appropriate policies 
when, uh, for example, for all of the private workspaces, for all of the sensitive workspaces, to continuously review those uh, permissions by someone who actually knows who should have access to that to that workspace and these are workspace owners so when we are talking about this we are talking about uh, access reviews so access reviews are uh, how we through syskit point enable uh, workspace owners to minimize the oversharing and also to manage the permissions on their own environments and how you can easily uh, apply those policies to the workspaces is using our governance automation rules. So there are multiple use cases for governance automation rules, but when it comes to uh, oversharing, what we often he uh, see from our customers that they are doing is that they are applying rules with access reviews. So if I create a new rule, for example, here, just a quick test rule, uh, what I can do is I can uh, prescribe a, uh, a bit, let's say, a couple of conditions. Uh, as you can see, there is a hefty amount of conditions that you can do. Some of them is related to the custom metadata that you might have, but usually what we see is that this is happening based on privacy. So if I say, okay, I want to uh, apply a certain uh, access review to all of the private and maybe even uh, highly confidential uh, workspaces, so sensitivity label is confidential, I can say, okay, when this criteria is met, apply uh, what policies? So the policies here, access review, I can uh, implement any of those, apply any of the policies that I currently have in terms of access reviews. And once I've done with that, uh, what will happen is that Syskit Point will actually continuously on daily basis monitor your entire environment. So if a certain workspace, for example, goes from public to private, uh, Point will automatically apply correct policies to it. If a certain policy goes from, uh, I don't know, uh, non-confidential to confidential, a point will again see that this is happening and reapply the correct policies to this. So this is something that automatically monitors the entire environment and automatically applies the policies that you have prescribed within, within these rules. Just a quick reminder how our, uh, let's say, access review actually looks like for the end users. So the end users will receive the uh, email saying, okay, your IT team has requested that you do a permissions review uh, on, on your site. Uh, they will actually go through a guided process, which is uh, very, very easy to understand. So they will go through a process where they can review all of the members that are on their sites or, or on the teams in this case. They immediately see which members have been added since the last review. And they can see also uh, when, if they ever logged in here. So I can say, okay, Irvin has not logged in here. So Irvin and Lee, I want to remove them from the group. So I'm immediately minimizing the amount of people that can see the information within, within this workspace. So this is by managing the members of, of, the, of the team. The other step here is the sharing step. So uh, in the sharing step, what we see customers usually doing is focusing on users. So this is how you can actually see which users outside of the members group have access to the content. So here I see that there are 15 people. You remember from the previous step that we had six uh, people that were members and owners of this group, uh, but also 15 people outside of the group have access to information within within this group. Some of them are blocked. So I can immediately say, okay, all of them that are sign-in are blocked. I can remove them uh, and remove their access. Maybe external users are not pro prohibited here, so I can remove all of the external users as well. So this is a, a highly guided process that uh, allows your end users to minimize the amount of people that have access to uh, the content within their workspaces. And going back to what Alex was saying, those five, five times more, uh, actions that organizations are actually performing when they delegate this to uh, to the uh, basically to, to the owners of the teams. This is actually how they are doing this. Most of the actions from the uh, workspace owners are done through access reviews. So this is kind of the secret sauce how how they are uh, performing as my, as many uh, permission management actions. So that's how this actually looks like for your end users. 
And uh, I believe we still haven't covered the lifecycle management. So when we talk to um, all of the IT teams, uh, they say, okay, uh, it's good that we have all of these things that we can mo monitor, but it's also uh, very important to con constantly work on minimizing the footprint actually for some uh, oversharing to happen. So uh, when we are focused here as, as admins, you, uh, you will need to set up what is inactive content, what is the inactive workspaces. And once you're done with that, your end users will again be receiving tasks where they will say, okay, do I actually need this workspace anymore? So after uh, a period of time, I can archive it, I can delete it as an, as an end user, uh, and I can uh, immediately, uh, this will immediately uh, remove this workspace, as well as all of the potential oversharing on that workspace. So this is uh, key in that sense. There are many use cases for uh, inactive workspaces. It's not just about minimizing oversharing. It's also about when, when it comes to Copilot, it's also about minimizing all of the stale content because we know that when Copilot has access to something, they uh, it can actually very confidently provide wrong information or outdated information to your end users. So by minimizing the amount of workspaces that ha that you have uh, at your in your tenant, you also mi minimizing the stale content in that sense. So uh, this is one of the other use cases, and uh, actually Copilot is then providing more uh, relevant information to your end users. And the third one is what we always often uh, forget is that all of the content in our workspaces is actually costing us storage, something that we talked about maybe in some of our previous product session, but uh, let's say inactive workspaces and removing or deleting the inactive workspaces is also something that can help you uh, remove the unwanted storage and keep your costs down by uh, minimizing the storage costs as well in that sense. So there are multiple use cases about lifecycle uh, when, when, when it comes to lifecycle management. So just a quick reminder how this looks like for your end users. So your end users will again get a very uh, simple task where they will be able to uh, understand, okay, this is a site uh, that I'm the owner of, how many users, how many files, how many, when, when was it last, uh, when was the last activity on this file? I can go into this site and see uh, what's what's on it. So this is the details of that. And once I'm done with that, I can decide if I want to keep, archive, or delete this workspace. So this is very uh, intuitive for the end users to understand if they still need this workspace or or not. Yeah. So uh, that's what your end users can, how, how they can help you. But uh, through a point, as IT teams, you are always in control. So you can always see how many uh, workspaces and uh, how many access reviews have been done so far. So uh, you can also see all of the details, all of the review details. You can send the reminders, which ones are pending. So you're always in control about, uh, let's say, what works, uh, what's happening here. The same applies to uh, the lifecycle management. Uh, you can see how many inactive workspaces you have. You can see uh, what of them you are uh, awaiting the, the response. Again, send reminders. So all of this is under your control and you can monitor this continuously from your side to see if workspace owners are performing their tasks. Yeah, and once we are talking about this, uh, the functionality that uh, even uh, Alexandra was, uh, was speaking about uh, during uh, her part. So this is the security compliance checks. So within security compliance checks, there are a couple of new checks that we have introduced. Uh, the most prominent one being the one where you can assess your private workspaces that are shared with everyone. So this is the uh, check that uh, provides you with information about all of the private workspaces, all of the sites that have already been shared with anyone. And you can, as an admin, uh, go into here and immediately remove this access. So if your end users are not performing those tasks, uh, if uh, this is something that has fallen between the access review uh, cycles, you as an admin have the possibility to remove that access immediately from, from this report. Again, you can do this in bulk. So it's not just one one-time action and you can drill into this and see on each uh, on each file where everyone except external users have access to. So this is a very, uh, let's say, comprehensive check that you can be uh, doing on 
weekly, daily basis, uh, monthly basis, how, how, however you want. Uh, but what we've also heard from a lot of customers is that they want this to be automated so that a lot of, um, uh, let's say these things are performed by Cisco Point on, on its own. So something that we are, we will talk about when we come to the ro roadmap session, but uh, something that we will be doing in, in the near future as well. So yeah, that's it with the demo so far. So Alex, over to you. Thank you, Daniel, for the great demo. Now let's go back to our presentation. Daniel, can you maybe summarize or give us a quick re recap of how yep. you're seeing this four piece? Okay, so uh, we've talked about Microsoft Copilot uh, and it only being here to expose existing security risks. So we had a, even a product session about this, I believe, sometimes in uh, beginning of this year or late, late last year. So you can check that on, on, on YouTube as well. Uh, but when we talk about the 4P uh, and let's say all of the steps that we have been talking about so far. So the first step is prepare and purge and it is there to help you identify and quickly remove all existing oversharing. This is done through sharing links report. This is done through uh, the group access report. And also the, the privacy can be checked on the site's overview report. And you can discuss this with your end, uh, with, your, with the workspace owners, if this is something that should be pu uh, pub public or not. So this is the first phase, the phase that we are seeing most of the customers uh, talking about right now. But we said it uh, numerous times on this uh, session. For us, it's key how to help our customers uh, stay Copilot ready. So through the prevent and protect phases, this is where we enable you to actually continuously monitor and automate any sort of uh, oversharing detection and also prevent that from happening again. So this is, um, there are a couple of steps that, that we've gone through here and this is the setting up of the alerts, uh, setting up the uh, governance automation rules, uh, applying access reviews so that your uh, site owners and the workspace owners can help you uh, in this uh, oversharing prevention over time. And uh, again, uh, as uh, let's say talking about the footprint, uh, inactive workspaces, minimizing the amount of inactive workspace and all of the benefits that come with uh, minimizing the actual amount of workspaces that you might have on your environment. So all the time being in control of uh, the entire process through our govern uh, dashboards as well as the security and compliance dashboards. Good, uh, and uh, just uh, if if you liked anything of what you saw so far, uh, there is a 21 day free trial. Feel free to uh, try it. Feel free to go to our web website and go through the process and actually go through uh, the installation of uh, Cisco Point to see all of this. And uh, that's that's roughly there. There is no obligation, no credit card required, not nothing of that source. So yeah, feel free to try it. Okay. So when we said uh, about the roadmap, what's coming next in terms of uh, oversharing, we talked about uh, briefly about automating the uh, oversharing mitigation. So automating the checks and performing so that Syskit Point can perform uh, actions on your behalf. So if we detect that a certain private workspace or site has been shared with everyone group, we will we will uh, remove this immediately so that uh, this is something that you don't need to worry about. So this is something that we are, we will be re releasing very, very soon. Uh, the other stuff that we are talking about here, so collaborative workspace reclassification, um, a lot of the customers that we are talking about need uh, the possibility to fine tune how they will be uh, applying the, uh, the access reviews. And a lot of this is based on their own internal custom metadata. So uh, we will enable you to ask your end users what, um, for example, what is the uh, project end date? What are all of those internal uh, things that you as admins need to know before applying the uh, uh, access reviews so that you can tweak the rules, the governance automation rules, so that they actually are there to uh, help you better with applying the uh, access review 
policies. So this is going to be another task for your end users where they will be asked to provide all of the custom metadata that you as admins need. Advanced workspace exploration policies. Uh, we, we have been talking about uh, inactive policies and in, inactive workspaces on this uh, demo so far, uh, but we often hear that organizations want to dispose of workspaces as soon as possible. So it's not uh, that they are, should be inactive for, I don't know, 30, 90, 60 days, how, how long, but uh, for example, when a project end date comes, we want to dispose of this workspace. So uh, these kind of ad advanced workspace exploration policies is something that we will also be working on. And this is there to minimize the actual sprawl and minimize the oversharing as well as we talked about. And last but not least, the ability to detect uh, stale content, to detect workspaces that have stale content on them is something that we will uh, continue continue to work on in the future as well. So that's that's roughly it. Uh, if you have any any questions uh, now, I believe is the good time that we will go through them. Yep, exactly. So for everyone who has, hasn't submitted them, you still have time to do so. We are here and happy to answer all of them. So let's see what we have so received so far. So the first question is, everyone's talking about everyone groups, but we have other large groups at our tenants. Uh, can we see where they have access as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so uh, as you've seen, the let's say it's uh, our report is not called uh, everyone except external users. It's, it's the group access report. So basically all of the groups that you have in your tenant, you can assess in the same way as I was showing for the everyone group. So if you have, for example, a group that has 100 members in it, you can uh, you can assess that where this group also has access to on the on the uh, group access report. So the same things apply as as what we were talking about the everyone except external users. So it's the same report. Everything can be assessed there, even multiple groups at once. Okay, thank you. Uh, this one is more aimed to our sales teams, but maybe we can give a quick overview. Mm -hmm. So can you elaborate a bit on the different plans of Siskit Point? Will the management plan suffice to prepare for prepare and purge actions? And is it possible to upgrade to another plan afterwards? Yes. Yeah. So uh, let's say management plan is the one where you have all of the reporting. So uh, with the reporting comes uh, certain actions. So all of the bulk actions you can perform from there. So management plan is there to help you with the kind of first phases. And then going forward, you can uh, up, upgrade to a larger plan once you get to the point of uh, actually requesting help from, from your end users. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then the third question is alerts uh, are a nice feature, but is there a way to delegate this to my site owners to ask if the team should be public or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, maybe something we didn't co uh, cover in the, let's say, roadmap section, but this is something that we've heard from a couple of, uh, let's say, opportunities and, and, and customers so far. So the ability to immediately uh, notify the end user to change the privacy or even uh, to automate this from Siskit Point perspective. So this is something that we will be working on in the future. Uh, some of that uh, sooner, some of that later. So I believe in the next couple of couple of uh, quarters we will re release the functionality where you will be able to ask your owners for privacy and they will be able to immediately provide that as a task. So something similar like we are doing right now for uh, for the uh, custom metadata. So the same functionality for, for uh, asking for privacy, for example. All right, thank you. Now, just a second to see the next one. Okay, what if the permissions inheritance was stopped at the top level of a documents library and there were many subfolders that have unique permissions? Mm -hmm. I believe, same too. Yeah, are so uh, there are... Yeah. So, sorry? No, no, I just elaborated. Go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are other reports within Point that you can use. Uh, obviously, when we are talking about, for example, group access report, uh, it's not just on, uh, let's say, high, uh, highest container or on a, work, on a workspace level. It, it provides you with the information uh, which workspace ha uh, or any file within that workspace is shared with everyone group, for example, on that. 
uh, but there are reports like, for example, uh, unique permissions where you can assess all of the unique permissions. There are other reports that you can use within Syskit Point to assess these, uh, these use cases that you might have. I would urge you to, uh, let's say, try maybe uh, Syskit Point on your own with a free trial and get back to us with uh, some, some sort of questions in terms of this. Uh, for your use case, I believe unique permissions is, is the best report to go to. Okay. Right, uh, let's do two more. Uh, so how often will you recommend access reviews to be rolled out? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is something that uh, why, why we are working on, uh, let's say, the high, so high granularity of applying the policies. So with the uh, rules, as you've seen, there are many conditions that you can do there. So uh, also with our policies, you can implement many different instances of policies. So for example, what we often see is that for those very confidential, very, uh, let's say, highly confidential private workspaces, uh, people are going to the extent of uh, even monthly reviews for that. Mm -hmm. For some uh, that are less sensitive, uh, quarterly might be a, a something that they are doing. And for those public workspaces or for some some of those with very, very low, um, let's say, uh, sensitivity, uh, I believe um, the consensus is that once a year is is enough for those. So uh, this is something that's up to you. Uh, every organization has its own governance policies. So uh, we are here to support that. And as I said, with the rules engine, with all of the governance automation that we are applying here, you can kind of pinpoint what you want to do there. So how many uh, policies you want to implement and on which workspaces. Okay. And the final one, uh, is the reporting real time? Uh, yes, so uh, the, the the reporting is uh, real time to, uh, let's say we are crawling the environment once a day, for example, so this is what uh, is uh, considered the latest within point, the, uh, but again, you can uh, actually resync all of your workspaces uh, when you want to do that. So reporting is real time. If something has happened, like, let's say in the last couple of hours, you can always get the latest by resyncing the site. So that's that's kind of, I believe, a high level answer there. All right. So this brings us to the end of our today's session. Uh, thank you everyone for coming and joining us. Uh, have a nice day and see you at our next product session. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.